introductions, just a quick uh, name, title, a little bit about yourself, a minute to, to, to I'm not that hard with, with the watch, but especially in Luke, all things. But you, you've never heard Luke talk in Luke. Well, well, I've heard him talk. Yeah, Dennis, there are people around here that have an oral diarrhea at times, so we're probably yeah. <laughs> Now he's getting personal. It wasn't me. No, no. <laughs> Uh, a little bit about yourself and uh, what you'd like for us and the other voters to know about yourself. Okay, now we didn't we did cross draw to see who goes first or anything like that, so... Uh, we didn't well, what, what's the wage? <laughs> <laughs> Jack? Oh, you're going to start from the top and go down? But anyway, my name is Jack Seedless. Uh, I've been in the Valley since 1966. I uh, was founder and, and president and CEO of Ammo Valley Bank. I opened up a branch up here in Rosamond uh, shortly after we opened the bank. It was in the early 80s. And uh, that was, uh, if you'll remember, Johnson's Market. We opened up in Johnson's Market, and that was one of the first banks in the supermarket uh, in the state. In fact, we were ahead of Bank of America. We were ahead of uh, Security Pacific and the rest of them. So we had a supermarket. It wasn't a supermarket, but it was the market in town yeah. in those days. And, uh, Personally, I've always had a soft touch here for, for Rosamond. We've had a very good relationship here. Sherry Duman ran that branch for me for years and did a wonderful job. Um, let's see, I've been, uh, whatever, let's see, University of Nebraska, and I graduated from University of Nebraska in Omaha back in 1957. Moved to California, let's see, in 1957, so it's been quite a while, and I consider myself a native. Uh, one of the things that happened, too, was that uh, there's not too many people that their granddaughter could sit there and say that uh, their grandpa signed their certificate or their diploma in college, because a few years ago, when I was president of the Animal Valley College Board of Trustees, my granddaughter came through as a graduate, and grandpa's signature was on her diploma. So. That's one of the small things. Other than that, I think that's about it. Okay. My name, my name is, can you guys hear me? My name is Lou Stoltz. I uh, came to the Alabama in 1957. I was 10 years old. I just got really bored in Portland, Maine. And uh, there wasn't any jobs, wasn't anything to do, so I convinced my parents that we should move to California. And they decided that I had a good idea, and they did. Not true, but anyway. That's when we got here. We moved to Lancaster, Dead, went to work at NASA out of Edwards, which was NACA at the time. And um, I went through school, you know, all through grade school, high school, here at uh, Lancaster and Valley High School. As a teenager, I worked up here in Roseland. We had a family friend, a good family friend. His name was Norm Rice, Norman Helen Rice. Some of you may remember Norm. He had Rice's TV repair over on Diamond Street. I think the building is still there. I'm not sure what it is now, but it's, the building is still there. But Norm was the, the one and only TV repairman in Rosemary. And my job was to pick up and deliver and also to test the tubes. So I spent a lot of time up in Rosemary as a teenager. Um, went in the Navy, uh, out of college at AV, and uh, went to Vietnam for a couple of years, came back, resumed my college at San Diego State in Arizona, and then again back at AV later. I was in the car business for many years, 22 years. I ended up owning a, a portion of a Pontiac Cadillac dealership in Lancaster. Sold that in 92 and went to work for Congressman Buck McKean as his district director for 15 years. So uh, I've had an interesting, uh, interesting life. Retired from the congressman's office in 2010. And at that time said I wanted to run for the college board because the college has meant a lot to my family. I, uh, attended AD College many, many years. My wife graduated from there and went on to Cal State Northridge. My oldest daughter graduated from AD and went to UC Irvine. My youngest daughter graduated from AD and went to work. So uh, we are an AD College family and I felt like I owed them a payback. Ran for the board, won a seat the first time and, and loved being on the board. It's a great school and I really enjoy what we do. Plus, for a retired guy, it keeps you out of the refinery and away from the TV. It gives you something interesting to do and to contribute back to the community. Okay. Thank you. Living an American dream. Grew up in LA with six brothers and two sisters to a single mother who taught us the value of hard work. 
there were two things that have three things that could happen in our community. Either you go to work, you go to school, or you go to welfare. And we chose work. Work and more work. After a, a lot of work, I decided that finally I needed to go back to school. And I went back to school when I was 20 years old. Went to Victor Valley College, received an associate's degree there. Transferred to the University of California, Riverside, received a bachelor's degree in political science from there. I went immediately to graduate school, received a master's in educational counseling from Cal San Bernardino, San Bernardino. And then I started to work and immediately joined a doctorate program in higher education administration. I am currently, as you can see, my opponents here are talking about what they used to do. Let me tell you what I'm doing now. I am a member of the Planning Commission in the City of Lancaster. Uh, advisory board to the Sheriff's Department in Lancaster. Advisory board to the Animal Valley Hospital. I work at Animal Valley Union High School, uh, School District. I am a board member for the $63 million Measure L bond for Lancaster School District. And I also teach at Victor Valley College. I teach college success. I recruit, retain, graduate and transfer students in an organization called Age to Change. And I also recruit uh, engineers, mechanical and electrical engineers for the Animal Valley Campus. So education is all over my blood. And uh, I am looking forward to getting to know you and to this one. Thank you. We'll just go down the line. Why are you running for this office for the Board of Trustees? Well, it's a, I'm running for re-election. I'm already on the Board of Trustees. And like I said in my introduction, <clears throat> it is a um, labor of love, quite frankly. Uh, I have a, a lot of respect for Antelope Valley College and the people that work there, uh, all groups of uh, employees that work there. But most of all, I have a lot of respect for the students. And uh, it's students first as far as I'm concerned. <coughs> That's our real job at Antelope Valley College as a trustee. We have um, two main objection or objects uh, that we have to work uh, to. We have to make good policy as a trustee. We have to make sure that that policy is enforced by the people we hire. And speaking of hiring, that's the second thing we have to do. We have to hire a good president, CEO, to run the college. Someone that really knows what they're doing. And believe me, folks, we have. We have somebody now that really knows what he's doing. Ed Knudsen, the new president of the college, has done a marvelous job over there in the last, what, two years, Jack? Just about yeah. two years since he's been there. He's turned quite a few programs around. He's turned over some personnel uh, and made some major changes that I think really affected the college, and we're very happy with the way things are going. I'm running because I want to continue that success. Uh, Antelope Valley College is the first, one of the first colleges, community colleges in the state, to be awarded a bachelor's degree program in airframe manufacturing. It's the only, only program of its kind in the United States. We are one of 15 California community colleges uh, that could get a uh, bachelor program, baccalaureate program, excuse me. Indy College is one of 24 California colleges selected to participate in the 2 plus 2 plus 3 law school articulation with six major California universities. So those are just a couple of things that are new at the college that we're working on, and those are things that I want to continue to work on and progress with. I'm running for the board, ladies and gentlemen, to be very honest with you, uh, because of the changing demographics. You can really see what's going on in the Animal Valley, what's going on in this one. And my experience working in the high school district, working in the community college system, the demographics has completely changed. Everybody sees it. But we haven't addressed how to deal with these particular changing demographics. There hasn't been someone that understands this particular element that's coming out of the high schools. And the resources are there for the students that are coming out of the high schools. They're all there. And it doesn't matter what color you are. But the fact of the matter is that this particular element that's coming out of the high schools, who are predominantly Latinos and African Americans, are not performing at college level. They're registering into basic level courses, and they're not completing those courses. They're not getting their certificates, and they're not receiving associates. And again, this is dangerous to our community economically. I'm running because I have a plan that I presented to Dr. Vieira that would help with this issue of students dropping out of high school without even touching the Antelope Valley campus. I'm running to make sure that we make our community better through education. I want to make sure that the students that do go to Antelope Valley College graduate.
That's the number one reason I am running for Antelope Valley College. The change in element needs to be addressed. If we don't award degrees and certificates, you better be going to be giving out EBT cards. You better believe that. And we are better than that. Two things, uh, Lou, as usual, stole my thunder on some of this stuff. Because, however, I will say this, that I've got some newspaper clippings back here on the table. And uh, after this is over, you can take a look at those and you'll see some of the things that Allen Valley College has done over the last few years. Now, I've been on it for 14 years, and I certainly can't take credit for it. However, there's been some tough decisions made over the years to get us to the point where we are today. And my reason for staying on is because I've got a business background, and also to embellish upon what Lou said, uh, Mr. Knudsen, who is our new president, and has been for a couple of years now, the beautiful thing about him is, not that I'd ever call him beautiful, but his assets, that is that he's got a business background. He's got a corporate business background. And that, along with his academic situation, makes a very, very nice combination for a president of the college. And that is where I fit in because the way I look at it, one of the worst things you can do is have a board of directors at a college or any school and it's all educators on there. <coughs> educator, 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 educator. To give you a perfect example, look at Animal Valley Hospital today and the problems they're having. And if you look at who's on that board, it was a doctor, 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 doctor. I'm sorry, but after being in business 50 years in banking, they are not necessarily the most, the best business people in the world, okay? So that's one of the things that I feel I do bring to, to Animal Valley College, and that is, a business background, 50 years in banking and financial, and to support that premise, we now have over a 15% reserve in our finances, which is right on the par with the other colleges in, in California. We've done very well financially, we're very strong, and like I said, we've got a good combination of the kind of people that are on the board, and that is important. We already have one educator on the board, She's doing a wonderful job. Her name's Barbara Gaines. She won a couple years ago. And uh, so now, this is a couple of businessmen on there, educators, it works out fine that way. Okay. Saying, it has worked out very well. Okay. Thank you, Owen. Miguel, what, cha what changes would you like to see? As of 2014-2015, we had a lot of dropouts. I believe it was about, the number is almost 3,000. Again, this change in demographics that I'm talking to you about uh, in the end of the valley and in Rosemont. And we're not addressing the issue at all. These students that are coming out of high school can't read and they can't write. When they register at the college and have to go through the matriculation process, they take an assessment test and it tells a counselor where they actually are as far as academics are concerned. And it's basic math and basic English. And when they do register in this particular class, they have to pay for it through a bog rate. That money comes from your pocket, my pocket. And yes, I hear Mr. Sifos talk about business, business, business. But the product is education. And we're not really doing what we're supposed to do to make sure that the students that are coming into our institution or even work with the high schools to create a program that will recruit them, that will retain them, graduate them and transfer or at least get a certificate so they could get a decent paying job. We're not doing that. So these students are dropping out into our community. We don't know for what and where. If you read the paper a couple days ago, you noticed that the homeless population is booming. And we're having difficult problems with that. So are you in Rosemont. So if we don't take care of this element, as I continue to mention, where do you think these kids are going to end up? These adults. Where are they going to end up? If they have an opportunity to go to college, I'm going to do everything I possibly can as a leader of the community college, as a leader of the community, to make sure that we are producing students that are going to give back to our community economically and to make our community better. That will reduce crime. If we don't, they're going to be out in the streets and crime is going to increase. And I'm running to make sure that every student has an opportunity not only to matriculate, but to graduate. What would you like to see? Uh, I can't think of too many changes. If it isn't broke, don't try to fix it, okay? Uh, like I said, 
We've got a tremendous record going. We've got some beautiful statistics that will show you that one of them being that we are, I think we're number 14, we're in the top 14% of 648 colleges in the country that the people that start, uh, start college stay for the first year. That's a retention rate in the first year. That is tremendously so. Especially when you consider that 70% of our students are low income. Okay? So as far as changing anything, I would say something we always have to work on, and that is really working together with the unions, working together with the faculty, working together with the classified and so forth. Probably that people situation is something that we can continue to work on more. As far as having a number of classes, as far as promoting that school and serving the needs of the community, I think we're doing a tremendous job. And that is attested to, again, by the statistics. If you do look at what we've really done with this college over the last, at least my last 14 years, okay, it's tremendous what we've done. We're going to be opening a 50,000 50, square foot facility in Palmdale. Hopefully someday, even though I'm, I'm not trying to get your vote because that's neither here nor there in a way. But sure, you ought to have like, some kind of a campus up here in Rosemont serving Cal City, Mojave, and the outlying areas to hatch be and so forth, where they don't have to come all the way into Lancaster or wherever. We'll be able to service another 7,000 students in Palmdale with our new facility that will be open next fall. So, yeah, there's things that need to be worked on, but nothing, I don't think you've seen anything bad that happened at Animal Valley College. And one more thing, by the way, a number of years ago, it was a three to two vote about bringing on LA sheriffs in lieu of our in-house security guards. Thank God we did. Is that any time you come to our campus, think about what happened up at Umpqua in Oregon, okay? We have at least five armed policemen on our campus at all times, okay? That needs to be publicized more often so that we don't get some weirdo coming in there thinking he can just come in and shoot up the place because it happens all of the time. But I will say that was one of our decisions, and it was a tough decision. That happened to be a three to two vote, the same three to two vote. So, okay? And it was the same two people that voted against that. But by God, we prevailed. And we got it. It was a tough decision. And now I would say we can thank our lucky stars that we have that kind of security on that campus. And remember, we have up to 15,000 students, which is darn near the, the population of Rosemont. Okay. Just the case. Right, and that's uh, having students become literate before they get to the college. And, and of course, that's a Honest and truly, it's a high school district program, isn't it? I mean, that, it's their responsibility to make sure these kids are prepared before they come to the college. One of the changes I'd like to see made at the college is a, is a positive change, and that is let's try and get more of these kids registered with the classes that they need in their progression through the college. And we're working on a new system to do that, to see what we can do to make sure that a student that's in his third semester gets third semester classes in order to continue in their program so that they can graduate in the required four semesters. Uh, that's something we need to work on, and we, we are, we're working on it. The other thing we need to do is, Jack touched on it, and that is make sure that this Palmdale campus we have serves a full contingent of students from Palmdale. Right now we have a real problem getting kids from the east side of Palmdale who don't have proper transportation to come to the Lancaster campus. They take the public bus and sometimes it takes two and a half hours to get from East Palmdale to the campus in Lancaster because the bus service has a certain route that they have to follow. We're trying to make that work so that we get a single route from the east side of Palmdale that goes directly to the college so these students can get to school on time and take advantage of a full day instead of just a half day of class. So those are a couple things I want to see happen. Uh, probably another thing that I'd like to see is I'd like to see us come up with a way to supply books and equipment to some of these students at a much, much reduced price than what they're having to pay right now. Do you know that right now at Animal Valley College, over two-thirds of the kids in classes are renting their textbooks because they can't afford to buy them. And there are a lot of people that are renting them to them. There's a group called Che, there's Barnes & Noble, there's a lot that will rent them. And that's a good thing. But the reason they're having to do that is the prices of these textbooks, all at all community colleges, is outrageous. Outrageous. A math book 
uh, in a basic math class right now, cost $97. That's outrageous for a freshman coming into college. So there's there's a lot of little things I'd like to see changed, and I think it'd be better for all the students. Okay. What what can the board of directors do? And this is this is Laura's yeah. question. Uh, and she's not here. <laughs> what, what can the so I'm going to say that everybody answered it really well. Gee, I wish she was. I wish she didn't. Uh, what can the board of directors do to get Roseman residents more involved with Animal Valley College? That's a pretty good question, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, I would, besides blackmail. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's possible. I'll uh, tell you what, um, you're going to need to tell us what you know, what your needs are. In other words, we can't just come out of the blue with something like that with Rosemont. Now, to answer that, because I tried to address this, and I, I did pass some of my cards out. If you look at the back of it, it says, it gives my Gmail at the college, okay? That is your invitation to directly contact me, and I will respond when you see a need of something up here that we can, that you can do, okay? Now, this, of course, is valley-wide. However, at least it's an opportunity without having to come to a meeting, which isn't always easy to do that. And, Perhaps some people don't like to come to a meeting anyway, obviously. But here is an avenue for you to let me know what you need. What's happening? Is there something going on? Is there something we is there some service that we we can do for Rosamond? So like I said, that's my answer is I can't come up and dream it up. But uh, I do feel as though one of these days we're gonna have a few, and you know we're already doing it. There's six classes up there now. Hello Valley College is, has a very good relationship with high school. We've got six college classes that are going on up here now. But naturally, there needs to be more. Finances also have an effect on that, of course. But we're more than happy to do it. If you see another need come up, or if you're not meeting it, let me know. Okay? Okay. Lead students from Rosemont uh, to universities, major universities, as a faculty at Hello College. And also as a mentor, uh, students that I could currently I'm recruiting, retaining, graduating, and transferring to university. The same thing that applies to the schools in Lancaster and Palmdale and Little Rock, it's the same thing that we're going to need the most. We need to reach out to the students that are at the high school and to make sure that they understand that there is an avenue that they could take to attend classes at Alabama. Of course, ideally, eventually, Rosemont is going to be big enough where you're going to need a particular campus for you as well. That will support something like that. The way that we're going to improve the community is through education. There's really no other way. A lot of these students that are coming from low income end up going to low income schools. And if they go to low income schools, they're going to end up having, for the most part, poor teachers. And if they have poor teachers, they're going to get a poor education. If they get a poor education, they're going to get a poor paying job. You see the cycle? Back to poverty. That hurts the community. That hurts the growth of Rosemont. That hurts any community. And the only way we're going to do it is with the program that I have designed to make sure that we recruit every single student that's interested in going to college, but not only recruit them, retain them, and guide them, and mentor them, give them the resources that they need so they can succeed, so they're not lost in the system. To put uh, an alarm in place that when these students are actually struggling, and they contact an instructor so the instructor can help us with counseling to make sure that we help this student succeed in college. If not, I'll go back to the same thing. No job. No job equals, eventually, the welfare system. So that's what we're facing. And education is going to be the only way that we're going to be able to get out of that. The population of Roseman, would you say, comes from uh, <coughs> either military or civilian workers at Edwards Air Force Base? 20. About 20 percent? 50. 50? What do you think? Randy, what do you think? I'd say probably close to 50. Yeah. Close to 50? Yeah. So those are people that have really good jobs and are making decent money and, and probably have a pretty strong family bond, don't they? I don't think Roseman has a problem in that respect. I think that's a that's a, a good thing. What I can tell you is, and I made some notes before I came over, because I knew this question would be important, especially to Roseman. 
But you know, the college, AB College, has been offering six to eight classes each semester at Rosemont High School. Usually it's English, it's math, it's history, and sociology. We hope to expand that. And I think we'll have an opportunity to do that once we're done with the Palmdale Center. You know, we have, we have really taken on quite a project in Palmdale. <coughs> the building that we're renovating over there is a former Albertsons Market, and you know how big those are. This one is not only expanding, it's growing up with another store. And by, their by their the time we're done, that whole building will be classrooms. There's a smaller building in front of it that was a medical office building. That's going to be the administration offices and the faculty offices. So all of that building will be classrooms. 7,000 students are what we expect to put in there. Now, that's our first expansion over to Palmdale. Our next expansion would be north, and you're the most logical point. You are in our community college district, and you've got <coughs> a good K-12 system here that we can work with and start with. So we're working with your high school district now. We can do more by expanding and maybe putting a satellite campus up there. Can't make a promise, but I can tell you that's our goal in the near future. Once Palmdale's done, we'll look north. We'll see what we can do up here. We think we get a good uh, influx of students at the Lancaster campus in Rosemont, and we'd like to give them an opportunity to have a similar appearance. And then the general tenor here. The, the next part is, do any of you have any questions that you can address that can be addressed by all three members? Yes, I have one. Um, at the Democratic debate the other night, Bernie Sanders said free education, free college education for everybody. So I would like to each ask each candidate, what do you think about that, and is it feasible? Jack? Sounds good. It does sound good. <laughs> like Jack said, there's lots of ways to pay for college at, at a community college like Hanwell Valley College. There's, <clears throat> there's a lot of financial assistance available, and uh, quite frankly, it's not that expensive uh, to attend. 
My granddaughter is 19 years old. She lives in Tehachapi. She was an honor student at Tehachapi High School. Uh, she's going to Antelope Valley College now, and it's a it's a real blessing because she comes down Monday night, and moves in with my wife and I in Lancaster, and goes home Friday evening. That keeps her from having to commute back and forth from Tehachapi every day. And she's also a good cook. But anyway, <laughs> she's doing a wonderful job at the college. Uh, she will graduate on time. And she will transfer to UC Irvine, which is what her, her wish is. And that's where it gets expensive when you get down there. But I think we can handle uh, a lot of students up here and, and uh, not worry too much about trying to find a way to tax everybody to make college free. Actually, wasn't Bernie Sanders initially thought out the idea? I mean, this has been going around for years. Barack Obama talked about it. There is approximately $60 billion tag for that. The fact of the matter is that the majority of students in our community are already getting free college education. All they have to do is fill out a bog waiver, I told you, you pay for it. Now, these are the students that are coming in from the school. So they're getting it for free. I think uh, a lot of people fail to understand that it would help the middle class. Um, some of you folks that work really hard, that make uh, a little bit higher than the threshold, where you do not apply, you do not qualify for the CalWorks. So it would help your son or daughter if they attended Antelope Valley College and you make a little bit more money. Obviously, if you are poor, you're going to get free education. I believe Tennessee uh, already does that. Uh, I think Texas is going to be next. Uh, I believe there was uh, Mississippi turned down the idea uh, recently. Uh, Denver is looking into it. So it's already happening. Uh, we're a very progressive state. Uh, normally it comes through California. As California goes, so does the country for the most part. So it will help the middle class, I believe, if you get free education. The poor are already getting it, and they have to take advantage of it. And if we're going to give it to them, we have to make sure that we hold them responsible as well. That's a big part of the equation that we failed to mention. The students are responsible for their education. If the American people in our community are paying for it, then we should hold them accountable and they need to make sure that they graduate. If not, they need to take uh, two to three years off before they come back and ask the uh, taxpayer for more money. That's just a fact. All right, my name is Albert Gatton. I'm a, a Rosemond resident here uh, and realtor. Uh, I attended ABC for about a year and then stopped because I didn't feel like I was learning as much as I should have. But, uh, and I had to work. I got married and had to support my family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that. There's that. <laughs> there's that. Yeah. You're saying it wasn't our fault. <laughs> but um, I, I want to address something that all of you kind of touched on, kind of in a mix. Um, Miguel, you said that, that demographics were an issue, dropout rates an issue. Um, uh, Lou, I believe you said something about the cost of books are an issue, uh, as well as literacy something that should be handled at probably a high school level. Well, you know, when they come out of the high school district and they still can't read and write. Right. You know. so, so my question would be is if, what, what is the demographic issue that you speak of? You know, let's, let's put something to it rather than just some cloud of this is an issue but not defining it. And then if these students that are, are low income are the ones that are dropping out and it's free already, how is that any different than how they're treating their education at a high school level and not learning how to read, not learning how to write, not learning the basic math at that level? Why would it be any different at the college level? And, and how would you fix that? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> you know, what, I was, what I heard you, heard you say, Alice, Albert, is that uh, what I've heard is that a lot of people are paid to be at Katie College, and after a couple of three, after a couple of three weeks they drop out, and people can't get those classes because they're filled. People who want those classes can't get them because they're already filled with the people who are being paid to go there. And that's the ones they drop out, and they still get to keep the money. Well, we that's changed been, that. That's been pretty well taken care of. We took care of that. That's oh. been changed. That system of uh, it doesn't doesn't work anymore. They can't just take the money and run. Now they have to stay. Well, that because they only get the money over problem. a period of time. Ladies and gentlemen, we, but they still, if, if you come to school, if I go to school and try to take a class, sure, I, I fill out the application, I don't make a lot of money, I'm getting it for free. Uh, what we're talking about is federal aid, which the student doesn't get a lot of federal aid. Uh, 
The problem is that for filling out this application, to roll it into several classes, it gets very difficult because they weren't prepared in high school. But I know Mr. Stoltz mentioned it, and, and who, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Jack mentioned it, but we cannot blame the Anno Valley Union High School District. The teachers cannot be the scapegoat for the students not learning. You mentioned demographics specifically. Well, they changed. I work in every single school, literally. Little Rock, Latinos and African Americans. Anno Valley High School, Latinos and African Americans. Island, Latinos and African Americans. Lancaster School District, Latinos and African Americans. But they're getting the same education as the other students. But they're not prepared, and it's costing the system. They're not prepared. The majority of the students that are coming into the college are not prepared. They're registered in the basic English and basic math, and they drop the courses. Then they try a year later. I'm a product of that, and I'll let Jack speak in a second. I started, as I told you, I grew up with six brothers and two sisters. I didn't just get up and got a doctor degree. I struggled with reading and math. English was my second language. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I graduated with early reading and writing. But I wanted to better myself after working at the gas station for three and a half years. And I dropped out three consecutive years uh, because I just didn't have the skills. Until I finally got serious, I got a little older, and I went back to school at 22. So I could get back into the rhythm, and that's how I finally was able to graduate the system. Yeah, I and think what they students, want to know is why is that the college's fault? Well, it's not the college's fault. The problem is, is that this, this element that I now just described to you, you need someone that understands it, that knows where they come from, that knows what they're going through, and that also is going to hold them responsible. That's what I'm saying. The board, current board right now doesn't really understand this particular population. It's not a matter of you know, being a Latino and help the Latino. No, it's about being an educator, helping people get educated. I'm for education, no matter who you are, what you are. But we have to make sure that we understand this demographic that is flooding our community. That is costing us a lot of money because they're not prepared. They're going to end up homeless. They're going to end up in jail. That's the problem that we're having, and that's why I'm running to start figuring out with whoever gets elected to start working with programs that are going to make sure that we prepare these students. There's not a lot of resources for these students, and there's millions of dollars coming into the college, and we're still not producing graduates. Mr. Zifa <coughs> said. Yeah, we're producing firemen, but that's an elite number. <coughs> Nurses, that's an elite number. Uh, the students that he mentioned, there's 15,000 at the college. He mentioned 25. Uh, there's also 7,000 that we're going to prepare in Ponder. But we still have less than 10% students transferring to a university. Not being generated by saying 10%. So it's a big issue and it's a big problem. And because I understand that element, and I come from that element, it only makes sense that I get elected to the board. Okay. They get their certificates, they get their associates and so forth. And that may be a low figure. Not only that, but when you did this demographics thing, I think that's a cop-out. Because you're sitting there looking at basically equally Hispanic, Black, and Caucasian. 20 years ago, it wasn't that way, was it? But we all know how it has changed. He's correct in that. It has changed. But when you look at, and some of you shook your head, you know what the sort of program is. Well, that is our way of addressing the situation of people coming in un unprepared for college, okay? And if I can read a couple of things here for those of you who don't know about the SOAR program, but it's basically students to the rise, okay, is what it is. And that is we take eighth graders to last year of, of, of uh, high school and bring them over to our high school, okay? So they get, they're still taking their high school courses, but they're taking college courses at the same time. And they have to be a minority group. They have to be low income. Nobody in their family could have a college degree prior to them. We are addressing the situations as much as we can with our, with our ability to do so. And they are also usually a student who has got potential, but they're not performing up. And you can tell which ones have potential. Any one of us can, okay? But they're, they're not, they're not growing up to it, okay, and they're not aspiring to it. So that's what the SOAR program is, and like I said, we, I believe it was 385 students that are graduating out of there, and they were doing so well. They love high school so much. It's a complete turnaround. So the college is doing its part again to try to, and we can't do all of them, but 
by God, it's a move in the right direction, and it needs to be extended because those kids are really loving college. They, they're eating it up, and they're excited about it. When Lou and I went to the graduation the other day, I, I couldn't believe how what happy kids they were. And they were black, they were brown, they were white, they were Caucasian. I mean, they were, well, that's Caucasian, but white, isn't it? But Asian, all of them, and just eating it up, proud to be there. And, I don't know if I mentioned that, but that was not a 5-0 vote on that SOAR program. Because there were people that figured, why do we want high school students who aren't doing that great, they're a minority, they're low income, and bring them onto the campus. Okay. And, uh, and by course, course, we did. But we're just showing how we're addressing the situation so that, as that, much as we can. Actually, what I've heard Dr. Pernato say is that there, there's that situation that there's a little dissociation between the age, I think, well, but again, like I said, if you look at if you look at the figures, how how long a student who joins that stays for the first year, we're 14th out of 600 and some community colleges in the country. Yeah, we're doing we're doing a lot better than some people like to say. But that's still a very small minority group, as you mentioned. The demographics that he mentioned, sir. I'm saying mentioned Asians, Black, Latinos. That's it wasn't it wasn't like that. Uh, what 20 years ago? It is. It totally changed. One of the one of the changes in demographics that we really are trying to address uh, doesn't have anything to do with the students. It has to do with the faculty. You know, you have a, a faculty that's been there a long time. They get tenure, and they want to work for through their you know best years. Uh, when the demographics of the students change, and we get a majority uh, of, for instance, our majority of students at Helen Miller College now are Hispanic. Second would be African American, third would be white and other uh, races. But our demographics of the faculty is that the majority is still white, and we have a minority of blacks and Hispanics as instructors. So that's something we're working on, but that's a slow process because remember, you can't just say, well, you got to go. You have to wait until they're ready to retire or move on or get promoted before you can replace that position. So it's a very slow process. But it's a process we're working at, and we're giving you a priority to make those demographic changes as we change those faculty members. But the new class that came in of those faculty that Mr. Stoll talks about, we had less than five minorities in that particular group, knowing that the demographics have already changed. And these faculty, once they get hired, they're not going anywhere. Okay. My name is Brenda Lewis Hawkins, and I'm here for another organization, but I'm also a community member. I actually taught at Antelope Valley College and at another university. I attended UCLA. My daughter attends Roseman High, and she actually went to private school before she came to Roseman. And one of the things that, and I'm very familiar with the SOAR program. I work for Lancaster School District. I hire the teachers. My husband's a teacher, but he's Palmdale School District. Do you work there now? Ooh, yes, I do. Do you? What do you do? I'm the credentials analyst. Oh, okay. Okay. My wife is a principal. Oh. Yeah, I have Karen Stoltz at the Jack Northrop Elementary School. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Fourteen years. All right. I'm new to the district, but. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. But um, thank you very much. Um, what I did want to ask is, I noticed that there are some Antelope Valley College classes at Rosemont High. Right. However. One of my frustrations and my daughter's frustrations is how can we get classes that are more, I guess, CSU or UC transferable that are being offered? You can ask us and tell us what you need. Is there... We have, we have been working with different high schools to, to get that mm -hmm. uh, question answered. And Jeff addressed that earlier. Uh, tell us what you need. Tell us what you're looking for because we can tailor a lot of those classes based on what you're using. Oh. And I know what you're saying because when my daughter went to, to Anna, my oldest daughter went to Anna Valley College, uh, my wife was an educator and she spent many hours over there working with the counselors at the college to make sure that every class that Christina took would transfer to UC Irvine. And that was very important because I had made a deal with my daughter. I said, I know you want to go to UC Irvine, but it's really expensive. So I'll make you a deal. You go to Antelope Valley College for the first two years, and then I will put you in Irvine, I'll give you an apartment, I'll buy you a car, I'll pay for all your food, you won't have to work, you just study. 
Well, of course, she finished her two years in three semesters. <laughs> and I held up my hand, and she did. But the one thing we did is we made sure that every class she took was transferable by working with a counselor here and a counselor down there. And you could do the same thing with the high school counselors and the college counselors. And we just well, had 13 new counselors at right. AD College. Part time. Okay, yeah, so that's what we need. So, well, I understand the A through G's and how that works and right. so forth and what is needed. However, in terms of how the college would be working with the high school to make sure that the offerings are And, and we're open to that. We're open to that. If, if we have someone that needs that, we're open to offering that. Okay. Did and you get one of my cards there with the Gmail on there? Yes, thank you. I'll be happy, happy to hear from okay. you. Okay, and then just from the teaching perspective of college students and um, all the way up to the master's level, there is a need, no matter what the demographic is. A lot of my students were completely unprepared for the basics, completely. And I don't know if it's, excuse me for saying, I work for the school district, but I don't know if it's No Child Left Behind that's doing this, I don't know. But a lot of the students are very unprepared. And there, a lot of schools, even UCLA, is trying to bridge the gap and making offerings of classes where students can take classes that will get them up to speed and so forth. Because they do see the need for the importance. And I'm just hoping that the college does We have to keep adding remedial classes. Obviously. Well, introductory. Yeah, well, yeah. you call it introductory, and we've been calling it remedial. But well, I'll my notes your, say like slash well, introductory, well, but um, those types of classes are needed across the board. It's difficult. So, it really is difficult. Yeah. We'd love to see everybody come out of high school with a diploma and the ability to take, you know, the regular normal classes of English and math and so forth at the Animal Valley College. But it just doesn't work that way. It's unfortunate it doesn't work that way. They're not all that bad. But there's a big percentage of them that we have to work with in order to get them up to speed so they can start taking the regular classes. You know, I'm hearing, Lou, is all three of you are in final agreement about that? Pretty much. Well, so we don't have to discuss it. Ma'am, your name again? Ma'am? Yes. I'm sorry, your name again? Brenda. Brenda. Yes. Uh, well, in our last debate, I mentioned that I recruit electrical mechanical engineers, and there's a particular curriculum that meets. It was somehow misconstrued where Mr. Uh, Jack Seifen said that Latinos and blacks cannot become engineers. What I initially said was that African Americans, Latinos, for the most part, do not go into engineering. Mm -hmm. That's initially what I said. We spend a lot of focus with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. A lot of that. What you said right now, where we could actually put classes in the high school where the students can start taking psychology, sociology, anthropology, biology, the general education course is doing 60 of those units. <coughs> I know because I currently mentor students and I go through that curriculum. I also work for Victor Valley College, or guess where I teach? I teach at Hesperia High School. I teach college level, college success for these students. And what my responsibility is to make sure that I guide these students to take the general education curriculum and prepare them for the CSU because the college system as an agreement with the CSU that if they get their associate degree, they automatically have a pass it to the CSU. That's what we need to start working on. We're not doing that, but we need to make sure that we do it. Okay, well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I, well, I think I'm saying is that the SOAR principle that is being applied to Roseman High School. You get your AA degree when you graduate from, or if you start as a freshman at Roseman High School, four years later, you're gonna have your AA degree as well as your high school diploma. And at the same time, just well, like it's a small minority, sir. Sort of students that have the ability, I agree. I just well, six classes is a small minority. Yes, that's I, I sent a student recently from uh, from Soar High School to UCLA, and uh, she is uh, 17 years old. She'll get her bachelor's degree at 19 and her master's at 21. Uh, but that's a very few minority of students that are, could actually achieve a high school diploma <coughs> and an associate's degree. Now, the way that it was sold, that was going to happen with all students. I recruit students into the SOAR program, and I recruit students from the SOAR program and send them out to university. So it's a very small minority. It's a wonderful program, and I wish it could be implemented here in Rosemont because it, it's needed. Well, it is in Rosemont. No, the actual SOAR concept is, is not. 
Well, is that your part of your concluding remarks? Because you're, you're getting a lot more floor time than you guys do this. Oh, hang on. I have, I have one question. I was addressed the question. I kind of all three. One, all three. Well, I have one specific question. There's a rumor that Measure R is going to go in for bond extension in November of 2016. And if the, if the bond is extended and you raise more funds by passing this bond extension, would you be in favor of putting a specific $5, ten million million aside to acquire a campus in Roselawn to build a physical campus for Grady College in Roselawn? We're going to do that. Well, we talk about a bond every year. But would you we talk about the possibility. Would you, exactly, support, yet? would you support uh, setting aside money if there is a bond extension in Roselawn? Not yet. Not yet. You would not? Not at this point. I don't think I could... Uh, I don't think I could uh, approve that at this point. I, I, I'm not sure that I could tell you what I'd want in a bond at this point. Okay. If we were to even approve a bond. I mean, we just had a huge bond measure back. How many, what, five, six years ago that, that we completed? Yeah. When I'm talking about completing. When you completed, yeah. yeah. The building on, on uh, infrastructure on the Lancaster campus, which is rather that's terrible. The fact that they, 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 years. they <laughs> we had controversies from people saying, wow, they used all that money to build a football field. No, we didn't. But the football field had been condemned. We had to, we had to rebuild it. It was condemned. We could not play games well, on that The entire new infrastructure had to go through that anyway. It had to be torn up. Had to do. Now, I can answer your question, my dear. Okay. Okay. And that is, it is a rumor. It's simply perhaps a discussion. There is no... Nothing to it, okay? However, if we do, we're not going to go, go out for pittance, okay? We'll be going out for probably a $300 million situation. And if we come out with a $300 million situation, I will be one of the first to set the, some of that money for Rosie, okay? Because if we can get that kind of money in here and do it. And you know, something else, some people don't realize what a board of directors does out here in college. For instance, we sit there and we use taxpayers' money to finance that institution building. And we borrow money through bonds. And those bonds have an interest rate. Every few years, we sit there and analyze the interest rate of today's structure, what's happening in the market. And twice in the last few years, we have refinanced those bonds at a lower rate and saved millions of dollars for our taxpayers. Here again, those are just some of the things that don't come out in public. We don't really talk about it. But by God, there's a couple of us here that are businessmen enough to know that what can we do to try to make this place more efficient? And that's one way that we did that. It was in the millions that we saved by back years. I refinanced those bonds. And my point is simple. It's that I want to look at everything that would need to be done within the community college district and then start dissecting what's where the money could go in different areas. And then it very, very, very well very well might be a campus. You know? <coughs> but I think to commit right now and say that, you know, that would be dangerous. Okay. Because I'm not sure we can do 300 million, to be honest with you. Well, I don't think they've got a board. I did hear the rumor and I heard out there that the board was, this particular board was discussing it. I didn't hear it myself, but I did hear it. Uh, I would not support another bond. I can assure you. However, however, if it's multi-million dollar bonds and it's kind of help our students graduate and get jobs, then that'll be okay. But we need to concentrate on what we have now and better it before we start thinking about spending more millions of dollars <coughs> to build another campus. We're not even graduating students for the most part. Okay. Chance to get to know you and provide you with the venue to help you get your key messages. Uh, I know that if I were running, that's what I would want, so I want to afford you that. Uh, this is an opportunity now for you to sum up what you'd like for us to remember about you until the end of the court of time. Dennis, you missed it. And, 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 and why he yeah, ain't called. And why he, this isn't inconsistent, is it, Randy? <laughs> Randy, just as a footnote, he, there was a wall separating his office and my office at one point. Oh, yeah, uh, it wasn't big enough. He was this close. <laughs> he was this close to greatness. Okay, so, uh, but uh, so, what, what do you want us to remember about you and, and your and, and your campaign? And what you
you stand for, and uh, why you deserve our, our vote. I think uh, I think I've done a good job as a trustee for the last four years. I think I've worked very hard at it. Um, it's an easy job for me because I live right across the street from the college, so it's a walk to go over there. And I spend a lot of time over there. I also think that the, the uh, job of the trustee is not to uh, try to manage the uh, the college. The job of the trustee is to set policy again and to hire the people that are going to manage the college and to make sure that that person hires the right faculty and the right type of uh, employees to make that college very successful. I, I totally agree with Jack. I don't think uh, five educators on a uh, board at a college is a smart idea. That's, that's just ridiculous. That's like having five doctors, oh my god, we did it, on a hospital board. And, uh, <laughs> so I mean, we all know how well that worked. Anyway, uh, I think it takes people that have very good backgrounds, my background's been in business for many years and also in government. And I think I've added something to the college as a board member. I'd like to continue and I'd like to have one more term. And that, I'm pretty sure, will be my last term. I'm not going to be too old to go for the third one. So uh, I'd like to see your vote and I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, uh, dear voters, thank you so much for coming out. It's such an honor. Uh, obviously, uh, my higher education degree, a doctorate in higher education, our education and administration has one element that has helped me prepare for this. But let me be clear, very, very clear. I'm not pro-Latino. I'm not pro-black. Pro I'm not pro-Asian. I'm not pro-white. I'm pro-education for all those groups because we represent all these groups within Animal Valley and Rosa as part of Kern County. I and the perfect person to sit on this board. Because, again, the changing demographics, to be able to understand this particular group is very important. And having the expertise, as I do, as a current college professor, as a current educator at the California State University Long Beach recruiting mechanical and electrical engineers, as I currently work with the organization Agents of Change, to recruit, retain, graduate, and transfer students. I do this on my own with my sweetheart, who is a school teacher. And I'm really, really tired of teachers being blamed for not preparing our students. They have to stop being the scapegoat, and we have to make sure that we hold every single student responsible for their education. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, and I appreciate your consideration. I'm a member there. Gentlemen in here in the uh, audience tonight that might be able to attest to my management ability, and that's Al Carlson. We worked together and redid the Animal Valley Country Club. How many years ago was that? A few. A few. Anyway, we worked together. I was the committee chairman on that particular remodel, and he was the architect and did a heck of a job, and it just and I hope it didn't leak today from that. <laughs> but to give you an example of kind of a person I am, to say, or at least I, I pretend to be. I'm on four different boards. I'm on my mutual water company board, and have been for over 20-some years. Uh, Palmdale Medical Center, I'm on that board, and have been on that for over 10 years, along with, and here again, we only have one doctor on the Palmdale Medical Center board, okay, the rest of us are business people and others. And then I'm also on the Friends of the Fair board over there. And uh, so that's just an example besides the Animal Valley Okay. And of course, as president and CEO of the bank, I was on, I've been on both sides of the fence. I've been in the president CEO position, and that's why over at the college, I can have great uh, feelings for the fellow that has to run that organization, because it's a big job that it has running that college. He's doing a wonderful job. But here again, being a director, being a CEO, both sides of the fence, you certainly get a feeling for how things work. So my background has all been this kind of work. I enjoy it tremendously. And I don't know if it counts, but I've been married 30 years to a Mexican woman, so maybe I'm, and maybe some of it is rubbed off, okay? But I do have a feeling for that part, okay? And she was born in Mexico. But anyway, I enjoy the board. I don't think, I, I can't remember the last time I've ever, if I've ever missed a meeting, I don't recall that I have. But it's tremendous satisfaction to see those students, especially on graduate
graduation here. And we should all be terribly proud of what we have created over there. And then don't forget, don't come on board with a gun because we've got armed guards <laughs> over there to make sure that we're safe. Okay? Thank you very much.